hello besties you welcome to this youtube channel in this video we'll be drafting cutting and sewing this puffed cap sleeve yeah so we'll be making the puffed cap sleeve in this video and in the process i'll get to show you or tell you different tips and tricks you need to know when making this particular kind of cap sleeve and if this is something you want to learn if this is something you're interested in do well and keep watching and do not touch the dial. <laughs> So the very first step is to draft out my basic sleeve. Now if you already know how to draft out your basic sleeve, please go ahead and do that. So the very first step in drafting out my basic sleeve is to measure around the armhole um, of the top that I am going to attach this sleeve to. And after measuring out 20 inches, so I'll measure twice to be sure that okay, what I got is correct, that it is on point. So after measuring around the second time, I got 20 inches. Then I brought out this piece of pattern paper, which I'll be using to draft out this sleeve. So the first step I would want to take is to mark out my sleeve length. So I've gone ahead to mark out 9 inches for my sleeve length. Although this is not important for drafting the cap um, sleeve, but then you just have to have the basic sleeve to go ahead is a foundation yes let me put it that way so i'll go ahead and um, draw a straight line across like this and this is my sleeve length next i'll go ahead and mark out my cap height so five inches is what i'll be using for my cap height you can make use of 4.5 inches but for these i'm making use of five inches so after marking out five inches for my cap height I'll go ahead and rule a straight line across it like this. Next, divide what you have for the round armhole on your top into two. So since I had 20 inches, divided into two gives me 10, which I have marked out on my carpet line. Then I'll add one inch for sewing allowance. On this sleeve length, I'll divide my round bicep measurement into two, which gave me 6.5 inches. Then I will add two inches allowance to it. Then I'll go ahead and connect this to this. If you do not know how to draft out your basic sleeve, I have done a video on this before where I explained extensively, so I'll drop the link in the description box. Next, I'll mark out the midpoint from this beginning to where I measured out on the cap line. By folding my tape like this, I'm marking out the midpoint. Now, on this midpoint, I'll find out the midpoint from my starting point to my carpet line like this. And then I'll go ahead and mark it out like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and form an air cover an S shape like this. You can use your free hand or you can use your um, curve rule, whichever you desire to use, it's fine. So I'll be using my curve rule to connect the lines. Like I earlier stated, sorry, this video is quite fast. Um, I have to be fast about it so that we'll go straight to the cap sleeve, which is the main reason for this video. So I'll go ahead and cut this out. So I'm just going to give you a nice cuff and then I will go ahead with my cutting it out like this. Now my basic sleeve is ready. So I'll go ahead and label one side as the back sleeve and the other side as the front sleeve. Now for the front sleeve, I am going to come down with half an inch like this, that is 0.5 inch. And then I'll blend this half an inch into the ham o like this. And I'll also blend it into the cap like this. Now that this is done, I'll go ahead and cut this half an inch out from the front sleeve. So this is only done on the front part of the sleeve. So as at this moment, our basic sleeve is ready. Now we can go ahead and draft out the cap sleeve. Now for the cap sleeve, you're going to come down on your sleeve by 3.5 inches. You can use 3 inches, but for this tutorial, I am making use of 3.5 inches. So after marking out the 3.5 inches, you go ahead and rule a straight line like this. You connect the dot into a straight line. Then after marking out this line, which is the length for our cap um, sleeve, we'll come down by one inches like this. 
so go ahead and come down by one inch from the 3.5 inches that we just marked out now after doing this the next step is we're going to blend this into the original um, 3.5 inches like this so you go ahead and blend this in like so so forming a you know curved kind of now go ahead and cut this out and the puffed cap sleeve is almost ready so our next step is to go ahead and draw out um draw your slash lines with two inches or 2.5 inches in between lines so you go ahead and do that so someone argued that it doesn't matter the number of slash lines you draw or the number of measurements in between so i'm using 1.5 inches here to drive in a point or to drive home a point but go ahead and use two inches to two inches for years After doing this you go ahead and rule your straight lines or your slash lines so the reason the purpose for using two two inches is when you're numbering you're going to arrive at six pieces but when you use a smaller number in between lines like the way i did with 1.5 inches in between i am going to arrive at a much larger number of pieces so you go ahead and indicate the midpoint of your sleeve just the way i asteric it and then you go ahead and cut it open so please just watch closely so you you know take note of every tips and tricks now that i've cut it open i will go ahead and spread with half an inch at the top and 0.125 inch at the end like this so i'll just go ahead and arrange or spread this on a new piece of pattern paper Please get a wider new piece of pattern paper when you're making this. So I'll go ahead and do that and place them down. So at the top, I'll make sure it's half an inch and at the end, I will make sure it's 0.125 inch, which is one of an eight. Then I will hold it down. So I'm going to do this all through. If you use two inches in between slash lines, you arrive at six pieces you understand the difference now so go ahead and spread them on your new piece of pattern paper making sure the space between each piece at the top is half an inch and at the end is one over eight or 0.125 inches And always make sure, always double check that you have half an inch space at the top between each piece. Always be certain about that. Always double measure or double check. <laughs> Now that this is done, the next thing is I'm going to go up by one inch at the middle of the sleeve. So I'll go up by one inch at the middle of the sleeve. That is where I asteric. I'll go up at that middle by one inch like this. Now, after doing that, I'm just going to blend in to, you know, raise it up like this. Now, this is going to give us the puff of this um, cap sleeve. So if you do not want it, if you don't want your cap sleeve to have any puff at the top, you can just go ahead and cut it out like that without using the slash and spread method. I don't know if you understand, meaning you do not need the slash and spread method if you don't want a puff on your cap sleeve. But since I want a puff for this, since that's the purpose of this tutorial, we have to go up by one inch and we have to use the slash and spread method. I hope you understand. If you do not understand, don't worry, just drop your question on the comment section and I'll try as much as possible to respond to you. So this is our new sleeve and I'm going to use this to cut out two pieces of our fabric and lining. So I have done that and this is it. So this is my back sleeve and this is my front sleeve. Now I will just go ahead and show you guys. You can see I left half an inch space all around for stitching. So you go ahead and do that. So next thing is I also ironed my gum stay, lightest gum stay to the fabric to give it a little bit of structure. So I'm going to place my fabric on my lining like this and I'm going to stitch it down like this. 
I'll stitch it with half an inch. That is that half an inch space I left all around. Now that I have done that, you can see I have done that and I have ironed, as you can see. And then after ironing, I also ran a stitch at the top, a very tiny stitch at the top to hold the lining in place at the top. I did the same thing for both sleeves and I'm going to go ahead and trim off this SS lining that I have at the top. Now that I have trimmed off the SS lining, I'll bring in my top. And then I'll measure from this dart joining at the front to the dart joining at the back and I'll add one inch to the dart joining at the back. So this is what I'm talking about. You measure from this dart joining at the front to the dart joining at the back, adding one inch to that of the back that is coming down by one inch below that of the back dart joining. I hope you do understand. Now for me, I add 9 inches. So I'll put these measurements in mind. And then I'll bring in my sleeve and fold it into two like this. After folding it into two, I'll go ahead and notch out the midpoint. Give it a little notch, a small notch. So that I'll be able to indicate my center of the sleeve. Now, after doing this, you can see that this is the front and this is the back because of the half an inch that came down with at the front. I hope you grab. So next, I'll go ahead and gather like this. I'll sew a gather at the top. So I'm just going to use my office pin to hold it in place so you understand where I am driving out. So I'll just, you know, sew my gather at the top like this. So go ahead and sew the gathers at the cap of your sleeve. And always measure to ensure you arrived at what that measurement you had in mind, which is the 9 inches for me. So this is it. I have stitched my gathers and you can see how beautiful our puffed cap sleeve is looking. So the next thing is we're going to attach this now to the sleeve so we're going to attach it to the sleeve arm all like this making sure the front the right side of our sleeve is facing the right side of the top and we're going to stitch it around like this as you can see now i have stitched it round. you can see how beautiful it is you can see that it started from this that's joining at the front and at the back you can see that it came down by one inch from the that's joining now you can see the picture I was trying to drive at. Now, the reason why I said you should use two inches in between each latch lines is this. So I'm going to show you now. If you used two inches in between each um, slash lines, you won't be having a leftover like this. So that's just a simple reason. You won't be having a leftover like this. So make sure you use two inches in between your slash lines. And I hope I've been able to drive home a point with this. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to trim off these um, leftovers. So I'm going to trim them off. Now, the next thing is we need to maintain the remaining part of this arm O. And there are two ways to do that. Number one is you fold it in like this. That is, you fold in the fabric and fold in the lining with half an inch. And then you place your aiming gum in between like this. So you place your aiming gum in between. And then you iron on it as well. Now, after ironing, you just run a single stitch through it like that to hold it more further down. Now, number two method, which I'm going to use for mine, is you bring in a boba bias that is the same color with your lining or a piece of fabric but it's best it's the same color with your lining to give you a neater work and then you go ahead and place it on the remaining part of your rough arm o and you place it like this stitch it and then turn it over like this and run a stitch on it like this i hope you do understand so let me take it over again you go ahead, you place your boba bias like this on your ammo and you run a stitch through it, round it like this. And then you fold in double times like you are aiming it. 
you turn it over to the other side like so and then you stitch on it so, so this is the two ways you can knit up the rough arm o now this is it as you can see i have stitched it down i can see the knit way you can see the knit look at the front and also you can see this part the way it's looking neat so if you enjoyed this video and if this video is up for to you do well to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so this is our cap sleeve looking so beautiful and all 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 glowing <laughs> does it sleep glow <laughs> but anyway you understand it's looking beautiful and it's looking so so amazing so see you on my next video love ya mm -hmm.